pros, bad pros, what you gonna do when the pros please are coming for you? Bad pros, bad pros. It's so campy and I'm never gonna stop. I'm never ah. gonna change it. <laughs> oh, oh, Lauren, Lauren, she's a bit late, but she does says read more books. Been in a reading slump. So. Okay. We will. We will hold next, you week. To that. next week. Next week. We, we expect. Will find out. We expect some pages to re to have been read. Yes. From what? And what you thought about them. All right. Yeah. Let's look. All right. I now, so we have a story tonight mm. from someone who's probably not in the audience right now. No. But that's fine. Uh, so th this is a fellow author tuber. Yes. By the name of Ian Kirk Patty Cake. Mm -hmm. um, some of you may remember her from when she was showing up on the streams. Um, and she submitted this short little story, Elephant Box, to us. And it's not very long. Uh, it's only 10 pages, but we're not going to be able to, you know, we, we don't have time like that. We, we don't have time like that. So we'll do the first page, as is typical pros police fashion. And if you want to go over to her channel and let her know that uh, we policed her pros, uh, so she comes and watches the video. All the power to you. <laughs> Let me share my screen here. Uh, do Mozilla allow. All right, Kaylin, you see it? Mm -hmm. I do. Okay, here we go. All right, so again, this is Elephant Box by author tuber uh, Kirk Patty Cake. All right. Yes. The doorbell rings, and when I get there, a cardboard box sits on my doorstep, marked with red tape, international stickers, and my grandfather's name above a blank return address block. The FedEx guy walks back to his truck, climbs in, and picks up his clipboard. I pick up my box, but watch him. He marks his clipboard, then notices me. Lowering the clipboard slowly, he gives me this look like he stepped in smelly shit, and it's like getting all up in his nose, <laughs> ruining his day. <laughs> okay, let's stop there so far. <laughs> okay, so I, 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 I like this so far. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the most compelling intro, no. but we we get a fairly decent scene description and you know anytime a story starts with a package being delivered mm -hmm. we we almost can be guaranteed that the package is is something unexpected or or is going to be the macguffin of the story whatever right. yeah um so that's a classic that's a classic way of beginning a story and uh, sometimes it's done well, sometimes it's not. Um, we haven't gotten far enough to see whether or not it's actually pulled off well. I do want to say that by the time we get to the end of the segment I just read, I like that the the language takes a, a tick towards the more colorful with the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> like he stepped in in smelly yeah. shit. However, I would argue that the word smelly is redundant there because I've never smelled yes. a pleasant turd. Right. So that yeah. we could X out that word and it would yeah. mean the exact same thing. Because it's redundant. And, and it's like getting all up in his nose, mm -hmm. <laughs> ruining his day. Um and I like how I like how we take like a a, you know, the narrator just takes a moment to give you a little bit of personal flavor there. Mm -hmm. That's what I like. We get, yeah. a, we get a taste of the narrator's voice. We move away from the bland, matter-of-fact, happening language to a taste of the narrator's personality towards the end of what I just read. So, yeah. Caitlin. Um, well, I was going to say the starting out... It's not, it's not very grabby. 
I agree. As far as language, it's just like, oh, okay. But it's one of those things where I wouldn't be necessarily worried about whether it was grabbing me in the first five lines because the title is Elephant Box, so a package is being delivered. So I'm guessing as the reader, it has something to do with whatever is being delivered at the beginning of the story. Um, but had it continued that way, I probably would not have actually been behooved to want to finish reading it as far as the flavor of it because it's kind of um, seasonless as far as language except for that minor oh hey the narrator has personality <laughs> yeah just in case you were wondering yeah you know yeah i will i agree with i pretty much agree with everything you just said something something else because we are policing this and and the everything matters when you're talking about prose yeah i would have i would have made all of this a lot tighter mm, like mm -hmm. that that all of that information could have been conveyed in a whole lot less words and yes you could have made it more you could have made it a yeah. little bit faster paced and more gripping like you could have said there's there's a pounding on my door i rush there but when i open it nothing but a cardboard box as a fedex truck speeds away that mm -hmm. would have up that that would have been like whoa okay so he wanted to get the fuck away from this box for some reason right or you, you know it would have mm -hmm. it would have created a, an atmosphere of urgency so that was one thing that uh, she could have done there to to up the stakes a little bit. Unless, of course, she wanted us to have a false sense of normalcy to start with, which is entirely yeah. possible. And uh, there's also the issue of the punctuation. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this has been edited or not, but I can tell you I see a few places where my, my editor would delete a comma, move a comma. Yes. Um, turn a comma into a period just as an example this very first line the doorbell rings and when i get there comma a cardboard box sits on my doorstep comma marked with red tape comma international stickers comma and my grandfather's name above a blank return address block comma okay <laughs> and i'm guilty of this in my own writing too and my editor just does a good job of telling me to stop <laughs> so i'm not gonna yeah. be but this could this uh, this whole thing could have like half the commas really so the doorbell rings and when i get there comma there does not need to be a comma right there the doorbell rings and when i get there a cardboard box sits on my doorstep comma period yeah or or period yeah that could have been the first comma or we could have that be a period you could say period it's marked blah, 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 blah. yeah period it is marked or period or the box is yeah so yeah there's there's just general cleanup and tightening of the language that yeah. could be done here uh nothing that's like egregious mm. just stuff that looks what's the word i'm looking for here pedestrian mm -hmm. um casual it's a little um, bland. Beginner. <laughs> not again, not trying to be a dick, just right. calling it as I see it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like you said, it's very basic. And yeah. I think part of it is because it's very telly, not so much showy. There's there's definitely a little bit of that bleeding through, absolutely. Okay. Lowering the clipboard, da -da -da -da, ruining his day. He twists his head to the side and turns his face down. I think he's going to look at the bottom of his shoe. We don't have a dog, so it wasn't my dog's shit he stepped in. Just my porch. He doesn't look at his shoe anyway and stares at me instead. Still, with that look like shit, 
ruined his day. Okay, that's a little that's a little bit awkward. Um, still, with that look like shit ruined his day. That that reads awkward. Yes. Looking at me like I ruined his day. Looking at me like I was the shit. I lean back and give him a smile and a finger gun. His eyes stay on me as he sits down in his truck, turns the ignition, and drives away. I flip him off. Okay. Whew. Okay, so I think he's going to look at the... Do, do, do. Let me go all the way back up to the start here. He twists his head to the side and turns his face down. That's fine. I think he's going to look at the bottom of his shoe. See, now we've switched from... This is interesting. Within the mm -hmm. same paragraph, we've gone from puking commas to short sentences. Yeah. And there wasn't any kind of a atmospheric or, or scene change that justifies the change in the writing style. So to me, that it's, feels abrupt. It, and it's called, I got self-conscious about all of my commas in the beginning. <laughs> and decided to switch styles halfway down the page. It happens with beginners all the time. We don't have a dog, so it wasn't my dog's shit. He stepped in just my porch. Okay, he doesn't you don't you don't step in a porch, you step right. on a porch. So the syntax there is, is improper. Yeah. That should be um, you could you could fix it simply by saying it wasn't my dog shit he stepped in. He merely stepped on my porch, or you know the point is it. it there's a few ways you could fix it. Yeah. I wouldn't have put the the idea like that to begin with, just because again it's it's so wordy. It's awkward. It's awkward and wordy. Then uh, next sentence. He doesn't look at his shoe anyway, and stares at me instead. Again, that's awkward. I, yeah. I don't know a better word for it. He doesn't look at his shoe anyway. Okay, so instead of saying that, I would have said something like, but he doesn't look at his shoe. Instead, he stares at me. That would have read so much better. The mm -hmm. syntax would have been better. It would have been more clear. And it would have flowed better. Yeah. And then we have still... in. So after that first part of that sentence right there, he doesn't look at his shoe anyway and stares at me instead, comma, still, comma. Ugh. Yeah. yeah I, see, Let's... I'm I'm not gonna say you can never do that. Have have a comma, then a single word, comma, because I do occasionally do that myself. But mm -hmm. right there, again, with the with the previous section of this sentence, having the poor syntax that it does and the being it, the still thing again trips me up really bad then uh with that look like shit ruined his day still with that look like shit ruined his day you know what i would have done to fix that still right there mm. i would have made that i would have made that a semicolon yes yep any other thoughts kate um well uh Nicole brought up an interesting thing that I also picked up on likes using the s word there are other words to replace it yeah now sometimes you want to use the word shit mm -hmm. but there are other words to describe fecal right. matter. Yeah. Among them fecal matter. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, unless there's a reason to be using the word shit, like um like it like we want the like negative connotations. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, like we want the negative connotation that comes with that word. Mm -hmm. Um, then there's no reason to just repeat using that word over and over again. I, I agree with that in principle. Yeah. Okay. Looking at me like I ruined his day. Looking at me like I was the shit. That reminds me of that one comedian. I think he's from Sweden. 
And he has that whole bit about how oh, he's learning. Like, uh, I am the shit. <laughs> he's like, so if you are the shit, that means you're really great. But yeah. if you are a piece of shit, that means you are a piece of shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, God, that comedian is funny as hell. I wish I could remember his name right now. Oh, my God. Anyways, moving on. Um, I lean back and give him a smile and a finger gun. Now, okay, so now we're getting... First, it's worth noting that this is the first place we come to understand that this is absolutely first-person POV. Mm Mm-hmm. So up at the top... The doorbell rings, and when I get there, okay. So actually, I, I let well, pick myself. That's the that we instantly get that it's first person POV up at the top, and it's reinforced down here. So we get that the character we're dealing with is also the narrator. So that's actually good. That's actually good that we a hard establish first person narration in this first paragraph. Again, the uh, the the narrator is clumsy in their language, though. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, so if you if it was that they were trying to portray this person as awkward um aces. Good job. Right. Right. And that's, you know, that's a legitimate thing you can do when exactly. if, if you want your narrator to be awkward and kind of a poor communicator, that's a bold choice and you better have a damn good story to back it up. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and, and by the way, if you do that, when mm-hmm. you write other characters, when you write other characters' dialogue, you want to have a lot of characters who are the polar opposite of your narrator mm-hmm. so that the reader instantly understands, oh, the writer this... is incompetent. They're just being true to the narrator. Right. And you would want to put that character, like, on the first page. <laughs> yeah, because... So that, so that the reader got the idea that this is a narrator thing, not a bad writer. Yeah, because... This is one of those things where you would have to have somebody who was a bit intrepid and want to make it past first page Mm -hmm. if you did not, because we have this comment right here. This would be a book I would put back on the shelf. Right. Yep. The box isn't marked fragile. Oh, you mean fragile. (laughs) (laughs) Fragile. It's Italian. Okay. <laughs> um, I lean back and give him the. He's his eyes stay on me as he sits down in the truck, turns the ignition and drives away. I flip him off. So again, very matter of fact language. There's until we get to the end and and we find out that she flips him off. There's mm-hmm. nothing really. There's nothing colorful or interesting about the language, yeah. and even the narrator flipping him off. It's just like okay, that's like. That's like the most barest, minimalist level of flavor. Right. Yeah. Okay. Back inside, my mom yells from the living room. What is it? Mail guy. Got a package from grandpa. Is it for me? No, ma. Is it your birthday soon or mine? Okay. So we get the idea that the narrator is still living at home no definite mm-hmm. answer on age but we get that they're home mm-hmm. and i don't see anything wrong with that dialogue so far it's pretty standard nothing to complain about there so far i set the box on the dining room table grab a knife from the kitchen and cut it open crammed inside are wrinkled newspaper pages and some brown grass The newspaper is wrapped around a small wooden box, about 10 inches long, 4 inches wide, and 3 inches deep. Two elephants stand center on the lid. Their trunks touch, but curl away from each other. Two smaller baby elephants trail behind, holding onto the larger elephants' tails. A bird sits on both the small elephants. On the front, there's a small lockless latch. So... Um, I will actually say that that box is very well described. You get a very good idea what that box looks like. Um, that's one of the places where the descriptive language to me is actually fairly succinct because we want, when you're describing an important object in a story, 
you want to give a good amount of detail so that the reader knows this is a special object. That's one of the primary ways you denote a special object from an everyday object in a story is how much description you give it. So we instantly get the idea based on the description of this thing that it is an important object. Um, so not too bad on that. Caitlin? Yeah. Um, I would agree because, well, like you said, it's important if you're making something the center of your story. Like, for instance, the story is titled Elephant Box. So it makes sense that it gave that the narrator gave it this much page time. Um, I will say, though, in the build up to this, it could have been a little bit better because now I don't even care about <laughs> the box. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Now we finally made it to the thing that you were talking about, but I'm not interested anymore because... Because there was so was so much, so much um, literary laziness above yes, this. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I don't think I would. I don't. I personally would not follow you down that particular um, trail of opinion, mm -hmm. just because. As a reader, I tend to be a bit more forgiving. Mm -hmm. Um. So if if there's something later on in the story that entertains me and piques my interest and holds my attention, it's pretty easy for me to forgive a lot of stuff. Yeah. So oh. do, I, I'm not going past this first page, but if I did and the, the box proved to be a really interesting thing and it just kept getting better in terms of that plot element, yeah. that would probably hold my attention. Yeah, I'm just saying it's a bit dry. Oh, yeah, for sure. In the beginning is what I'm saying. No, That's no, why. It, yeah, no disagreement. None at all. Yeah. It is just yeah. a bit dry. Um, um, so. Yes, the character's actions could show them being awkward. I agree. And see, if you're going to be writing an awkward narrator and an awkward protagonist, I would argue that you should avoid first person. And and I wrote mm -hmm. I wrote my trilogy in first person. I love first person stories. Yes. But if your protagonist and your narrator well, so here so here's the point I'm making. Your protagonist should be separate from your narrator. If your mm -hmm. protagonist has this awkward kind of hard to understand way of speaking because you don't want your prose to be that way. Right. So with with your character being that way i wouldn't make them the narrator the only reason my story is so good with a first person narrator is because my protagonist is very intelligent and articulate and has a lot of personality yeah this narrator this protagonist it's like a it's like an awkward teenage girl yeah and, and that's no oh, <laughs> that's what it is because i mean we're already down to the first page and there's strain in it yes there's strain in the voice. So, well, there's beef, strain in the voice in the first paragraph. Yeah. So it's like beef up the character just a little, just a little bit. You don't have to do too much, but tighten it up, fix the syntax, punctuation, and beef up the character flavor just a little bit because I liked the fact that we got to see a little bit of color flare against all of the monochromatic. Here's words on a page right there in the first paragraph, you know, when it was talking about how the delivery guy smelled the smell and how he reacted to it and how the narrator described his reaction. I thought that was a good flare of color of the narrator's personality. But other than that, yeah. Yeah, so overall, we accuse you of 
literary laziness yes. and improper attention to syntax. Your sentence, edit your shit. <laughs> exactly. Edit an editor for you. An editor for you. It's not a leg lamp. Is that? I'm not sure what you mean by it's that. It's from a Christmas story. Oh, I didn't. It's a I, Christmas story reference because because Lauren up here said the box isn't marked fragile, and I was like, it's Italian. And then and then it opened the thing, and it was an elephant box, which of course is the title of the story. But she was like, it's not a leg lamp. So yeah. So <laughs> so no, her sentence is soap poisoning. <laughs> I, I feel like there's a I feel like there's a whole ass reference here that I'm not. Oh, uh, you'll have to watch to. a Christmas. You'll have to watch a Christmas story. But yes. All righty, Caitlin. Well. Yeah, yeah Zach. <laughs> she said, "Yeah, Zach. Good job." <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate okay. it. All right, Caitlin. Yeah. You know what to do. I do. Bad pros, bad pros. What you gonna do when the pros please come in for you? Bad pros, bad pros.